people has not arrived here yet. But I thought uh, I prepared uh, three slides as an introduction to this. And then we have two speakers. And uh, I <coughs> this, this that I will show, I hope it's a good uh, uh, um, start for a discussion. Um, When we want to simulate tubular combustion, we have a, a range of scale. Um, I will go quickly through this. <laughs> um, there are different uh, things going on at. It was quick. <laughs> I think I forgot my charger. You can use my one. Yeah. But it's dead, yes. 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 Yeah, I will get mine. Yeah, you use me. Can you use mine? Oh, use your computer. Okay. Yes. Okay, I can still one. Okay. Yeah. 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 modeling of the dissipative and diffusive scales where the combustion effect happens. And then we have DNS where all scales are resolved. And uh, because <coughs> of the cost is limited uh, today to a low Reynolds number. So if I when yesterday when Axel asked me, I tried to think about the perfect case for less for LES. And the uh, free shear flow at high Reynolds number is the perfect case, I think. Uh, momentum, heat, and mass transfer are affected by the resolved large scale of motion. The cascade of energy proceeds from the resolved large scales to the modeled statistically isotropic scale, so that modeling this uh, statistically isotropic turbulence is uh, convenient. Uh, so, strong arguments to expect that this approach to be successful since both the quantities of interest and the rate controlling processes are determined by the resolved scale. When I say quantity of interest, I imply that we are not in a combustion case <laughs> because then we are interested in the small scale. Mm -hmm. So, I thought that this was, uh, you know, the perfect case for a large energy simulation. This is stratified, there is a stratified change or... No, I mean, no, I am not thinking about any special stratification mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. any density differences. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about free shear flow or even swirling flows or, mm -hmm. you know, complex flow field, but mm -hmm. with some kind of uh, um, high Reynolds number uh, uh, case with statistically isotropic. <laughs> 
uh, small scale. But when you say shear flow, um, there is a possibility that the shear flow may impose anisotropy to all smaller scales. Yes, yes. So that is a more uh, complex uh, case. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, do you, can you actually tell whether that that's really not the case? No. I mean, do you know that now? Uh, what you that the shear really becomes that the flow really becomes isotropic at small scales, the shear flow. Well, it depends which shear flow you have. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, uh, here we have when we have shear in near the wall. Okay, in that case we have. I, I in the title I put known issues mm -hmm. when the rate controlling processes are not resolved. That is wall problems. So. Uh, my friend Jovelin at Sandia, he is very consistent. He resolves, even if he does LES, he resolves the wall with the grid and spends a lot <coughs> of time on that, obviously. This is a, um, a problem if you want to, re to make a simulation of a gas turbine of the whole combustor because you, you probably w wouldn't be able to afford it. Uh, so, and when you do, in fact, resolve all scales, are the subgrid scale terms zero? Because they should be when you when you resolve everything. So, is the model that you use consistent with what you're doing? Or when they are not resolved, what is the, the implication of patching with low the wall or k epsilon uh, turbulence model? as it is often done, uh, when you don't want to use a lot of uh, points to resolve the wall layer, then you usually patch and do some kind of hybrid patching between different approaches. What is the effect of this? Uh, uh, these are questions, I mean, uh, it's to stimulate the discussion, okay? Another case is turbulent combustion at high range of number and down color number. So the essential rate controlling processes of molecular mixing and chemical reaction happen at the smallest not resolved scales. These processes <coughs> have to be modeled as in runs, obviously at a much higher cost, because LES costs uh, much more. And such models will be influenced by the fixed size and will influence the large resolved scales through expansion and uh, uh, thermal gradient. So a third, uh, I would say, less important point than the first two is the correct specification of the turbulent fluctuation at the inflow. When you have, when you want to do a less on the turbulent flow, you have to specify the inflow conditions, and those are not always easy to, to specify if it is a turbulent flow at the, at the entrance of the domain. So, what is the impact of non-optimal boundary condition specification on the solution. Are the rate <coughs> controlling processes accounted for in the boundary condition? If you have strong effect of the flow coming in into the domain, what is the, the impact of this? And what is the cost? I mean, if you want to specify turbulent fluctuation at the inflow of the domain, you probably, the best thing to do is to, to make a less, an auxiliary less, of what comes before <laughs> that inflow. And perhaps not having so much uh, chemistry or species with this. So what is the cost of this? And finally, are less solution independent of the grid size and the filter width ratio? Are they? Because, I mean, these things have an impact on, on the solution. And they are somewhat dependent on the grid size. So, again, these were just a uh, few questions uh, to stimulate discussion. And I then give the word to uh, Bai. Uh, Maybe we can uh, or, discuss. Or discuss, yes. Discuss yes. this. Yes. Because I haven't prepared for this. No, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But, uh, no. So, when you say SGS terms zero locally, that must mean in the limits Limits of limit of very small bridge size, of course. Yes, Finding when when uh, in fact all scales are resolved, 
But that's often, then yeah. <laughs> the fifth, the, the fifth and third should go to zero. And uh, but is that possibly not the case? I mean, this, they should they scale, of course. I mean, like uh, Smarvinsky scales quadratically with the yes. mesh size. Yes. But then, of course, multiply uh, linearly with the velocity gradients. Mm -hmm. And so I think asymptotically that behaves like the delta x. So if they go to zero, like delta x goes to zero. Yes. Uh, not always. Not always. Well, if you have a sphere and there's no um, there's no turbulence, they still get a contribution. The smart energy model. So then it fails. I don't understand that. Um, so if you need a ball and you don't have any turbulence there, yes, then it still gives a contribution. Yeah, but the coupling is. And that is wrong. So um, you need to have kind of ball bent in that case or uh, use a smart energy model. But the delta x, uh, I'm asking what happens if delta x goes to zero? <coughs> yeah, but if it's not um, going to zero, it can just have a finite uh, value. So in the smart mesh model, it doesn't work in the walls. It's a small but fine value. Yeah. But I mean, the question is how do you pose that question? I mean, I thought the question means what happens as delta x goes to zero? Yeah, okay, but then you have another case, and uh, if the turbulence, if there's no turbulence, we still have a shear and you have a finite. Uh, um, mm -hmm. filter with, then the smart energy model fails. Well, I, in general, my so question Because then it gives a finite uh, contribution. Yeah, that, yeah, of course. Um, but that can never work. I mean, if you have a finite mesh size, uh, how, can, uh, how can that ever be? I mean, I don't... Uh, that is my point. That, uh, I mean... You have to go to zero. The model, the size. The model. Well, what, what else do you mean by this question? Well, I mean, it, it should be go to zero also if delta x goes to the Corbogoro scale, because then it will yeah, be the proper DNS. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's the yeah, yes. contributed for a certain role, you will, uh, you will yeah, have something yeah, else. Yeah, fine. But then in that case, what uh, Gert just said, it wouldn't, you would have not accept it, it seems, or what? Well, the point is that some terms, depending on the model that you use, the autosubject scale model, uh, some, some of these terms may, may become small, but they, they may not go they, they may not be zero, okay? And, uh, and this has possibly an impact. Uh, this was the, yeah, um, yeah, the origin of my question. You, um, yeah, sorry, you, you talk about uh, shear flows. Uh, yes. Depending on different shears, you have a different wall, wall flows. Wall what, what, what do you think about uh, free shear flow, like the um, jet or? What about the isotropy uh, behavior with uh, small scales? Uh, well, my my point here was that if you have uh, a wall flow and you resolve yeah. all scales towards the wall, yeah. then you have to be sure also that the model uh, takes into account this, that you are resolving everything. I am not referring to an anisotropy of the of no, shear layers. I am referring to, to wall flows and what happens to the uh, to less models when uh, you are in fact uh, not resolving only the large scales but you resolve everything. What happens then? Uh, some of the sub depending on the formulation obviously of the subgrid scale model, they may not go to zero. They, they may not become zero. They may be very small, as Jeff was saying, but not zero. And what is the impact of this on the solution? So this was my question. Uh, my, my question was uh, actually, uh, in RDS, do we need to assume an isotropy type of behavior for the small scale? Well, at least in combustion uh, areas, in uh, practice, nobody talk about it. So, uh, I mean, the, uh, the uh, I mean, the, uh, the dependent depends whether the LES model actually is itself assuming isotropy. I mean, like Smogolinsky, of course, it is yes. assuming isotropy, and so that can only be valid if the turbulence really becomes has a tendency to becoming isotropic by the time it reaches the but, but there is a, there is an argument that uh, since 
the energy uh, content in the small scales are so low. Is that so important? Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, usually anisotropy, we feel anisotropy in larger scales. If we decrease scales, the degree of anisotropy decreases. If Reynolds law is large. Is that true? In well, not that the world. For hydrodynamic turbulence, it's true. For magnetic hydrodynamics, it's not true. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. This is this principal difference between yeah, yeah. two kinds of turbulence. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. for, com for combustion, it's not the case. No, ah, it's, it's not the case for combustion? Of course, because we have the very strong gradients of concentration for the light. So the larger scales. Are not the small, small scales. Scale. Small scale. Very small scales. So you, scale. you have clusters. So uh, maybe it's more important not physically, but the uh, similarity of, uh, of the transfer of, for example, fluctuations in some sense. Of course, we, if we consider the combustion, never we have a real similarity of scales. Never. It depends on the, on the, on the situation. And even if we consider, for example, why you limit yourself uh, by uh, high bunker numbers. But usual situation is just two days. It's we have a few general number, and uh, dumpling number is about one. one. Mm -hmm. Because if dumpling number is uh, high, it's a very good, it's comfortable situation. We can have a flame base. Is it possible? You can take, for example, it's much easier. But if dumpling number is low, this is a real problem because we can't simulate. So maybe it's more important than the number of the uh, uh, Is it possible to write the definition of the number? Well, it's the ratio between the uh, mechanical and the chemical time scale. Ah, okay. So, but it depends how we define the mechanical time scale. Yeah. Yeah, so well, well, larger the the universe, universe, uh, universe, scale or... Yes, oh, yes, important. yes, it's very different. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But... Well, when you have a, a high dumpling number and you have, a, you can say that the chemical time scale is very short compared to the mechanical one, then you can uh, do the flame rate assumption. Mm -hmm. However, I would not say that this is very easy for less because it will have to, to resolve the flame thickness, which is not possible, and then you have to model this somehow. Yes, but we can use some kind of theory for, for flame rate. In any case, but if there are no flameless, what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, we don't know how to manage the situation. This is why I. Yes. You said flame rates, you mean reaction rate, right? Flame rate. Flame rate. Flame rate means a very thin reaction zoom. Yes, yes. Okay. It's like, like for example, we have a laminar flame. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if we have laminar flame, we can suppose that the structure of flame in the turbulent flow is like laminar flame. So if you know just one concentration, we can calculate others. Yeah. Because in a Oxide. laminar flame, we have a strong connection between mm -hmm. species. Mm -hmm. Oxide. Mm -hmm. is, yes. a, is the same situation in turbulent flow? We don't know. Yes. But usually we suppose that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes we introduce two species. Mm -hmm. sure. More sure. Yes. Not the case with yeah, yeah. So if uh, flamelet you have uh -huh. when when the chemical time scale, so the say the, the flame time or whatever you want to use, it's short compared to the uh, mechanical time scale of the rotation of these eddies, for example. Mm -hmm. So then you can describe the flame as a surface. Mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. a, well, as a as a brings the uh, surface, uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can do some assumption. Uh, however, in less, you don't have enough resolution to resolve this surface. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. thereby come some thickened flame mo models and uh, some other approaches. Uh, the different is the case when, uh, when the flame is this thick and the eddies are this thick, <laughs> okay? So this is another region in which the flame is. Uh -huh. uh, this is a low down column. Yeah. yeah. And if uh, turbulent time is much larger than the uh, 
for at least a chemical time, then turbulent diffusion is determined by the chemical time. So turbulent diffusion coefficient in that case is like tau c multiplied by u squared. Why so? Because the temperature is not the same. Because you've got two, uh, two memory times, yeah. chemical and mechanical, and some competition. If chemical time is very short, in this situation, problem diffusion controlled by chemical time. If opposite, by uh, dynamic. But obvious result, if <coughs> tau c tends to zero, turbulent diffusion tends to zero. It is completely plausible. Because if a reaction is very fast, you should come back I mean, molecular You think about molecular diffusion. No. Mm -hmm. uh, I speak about turbulent, turbulent diffusion. Yeah. If we have turbulence, yeah. but chemical reactions are very fast, yes. we can look in some sense ignore turbulence, but nevertheless, since there are velocity fluctuations, we have turbulent diffusion. Well, the turbulent okay. diffusion coefficient is tau c, chemical time, multiplied by u squared, okay. in that case. Mm -hmm. it is, uh, maybe in our world it's called the uh, flame generating turbulence. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> no, no. it's it a it very general result. Yeah, it's not general. We find, uh, no, 15 years ago, I think, they published the physical review letters. Unfortunately, people which have real interest with it, because maybe it's a suitable place. But maybe now we have good possibility to inform uh, this audience about this result. Okay, we'll be started. It's a question uh, to discuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It's not clear. It's not clear. Okay. Well, my... Uh, actually, my point with this was to, to generate a discussion, as we are doing, and to also to be able in the next uh, weeks of the program to come back to this, also with the other people that would come, mm -hmm. and, uh, eval and discuss and evaluate the different combustion models that are used. Uh, in this. Because I think this is an uh, interesting uh, task to do. Uh, uh, I think that while in uh, RANS and for DNS things are in one sense simpler, I think it's more difficult <coughs> with LES. Uh, this is my personal opinion. Huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, I have some comments on the last point. Yes. Uh, I agree with you that uh, LES is, uh, is, uh, is more difficult because it's uh, very much depending on the inflow conditions for some cases. Mm -hmm. We have tested uh, a jet, simple jet flow, mixing crosses of jet. And uh, uh, we tested different boundary conditions. Uh, with uh, different uh, mean profiles, different integral scales, and you get a completely different dynamic behavior. Mm. And mixing is uh, completely different because uh, the, the larger scale structures are different. So it's so sensitive to inflow conditions. Because we often we validate our results against the experiments. Uh, unfortunately, experiment people never provide the detailed information to the unit. So uh, these comparisons make uh, LES results very confusing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they say, okay, this is a very good agreement, sometimes it's not. Um, and sometimes they say mean, the mean velocity flow is agreeing very well, but uh, the composition is totally wrong. This is probably not due to the LES model itself, mm -hmm. but due to the boundary function. So what you're saying is that you're, you're, you're lacking information about boundaries yeah. from experiments, right? Mm -hmm. you, you would actually see the same problem in the DNS as well, then, I guess. I guess so, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the same problem. Okay. But uh, nobody or few people use DNS to really study a real problem, to study periodic boundary conditions. So in, the, in your case, you have war. It's also relatively simple. Mm -hmm. Well, my... My point in, in setting this here is also to say, okay, when you want to do a DNS, you know that it's going to cost. And, and you will try to do it in the most rigorous way. And LES is kind of a compromise where you always try to, to optimize the computer cost and 
the specification of the power <coughs> condition, I believe, has been a little bit uh, more sloppy than with the DNS. Also because... Why? Because you have the same problem. Yes. Yeah. Well... <coughs> so I don't see the difference in effect between the alias and the in this case. Well, one, di one difference uh, for sure is that uh, one, when you have very high order stances, as you usually do in DNS, of order 6 or higher, what the specification of the boundary condition is uh, very sensitive uh, because if you put things at the entrance that, at, of the domain that are not uh, uh, generated in a proper way, you will have numerical problems. Second order schemes or third order schemes uh, that are used in LES are more able to, to accept uh, lower or, well, less accurate uh, specification of the boundary condition. So, well, I agree with you. If you want to do things uh, if, uh, very rigorously, uh, you have both, in both approaches, you have problems. Perhaps it is only my impression, and it is so that uh, sometimes in LES one is less careful in putting the boundary Okay, but what I mean to the um, uh, info condition for the jet, you have the same problem in DNS. Mm. They are exactly the same. Mm. So DNS is more, more accurate than the LES in this case. Mm. Yeah. Or it just has the same sensitive uh, mm. sensitivity to yeah. the info. But, but you said uh, LAS often used second or third order. Is that, I mean, if second order for LAS, is that actually enough? I mean, you will, if you go, if you have a pretty small scale, then you will be pretty diffusive in the numerical scheme already. Well, you have to, to compensate by more points, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's about well, well, in, losing. In, in any case, if you look at, the, say, the commercial codes that are used, that are available for LES, they use uh, second yeah. order. Yeah, but, but I think also that was one of the, the arguments against that fluent to use second order, I think. Mm -hmm. And if you go to smaller scales, you really have a problem with the, with the numerical diffusion mm -hmm. of, of that scheme. Yeah. Do you have any you thoughts about that? Well, we use um, third order schemes, or fifth order schemes, because they generate uh, dissipation. Numerical, numerically, mm -hmm. so you stabilize. I heard that uh, if you use uh, central difference schemes, you have to use a um, kind of a, uh, the dissipation is controlled by the SES model. Mm -hmm. by, for example, the uh, Smogonsky model. Mm -hmm. You need to have that. If you use a small, uh, SES model like um, not that dissipative, then you have to combine that. But then you really don't know, I mean, your, your, your reservoir model is not sort of dissipative. But then you are dissipating in the grid instead, and you really don't know what's going on then, do you? But the argument is that uh, it doesn't matter so much because of the energy containing the small eddies are so low. Yeah, the but still, I mean, but still these are the eddies that are crucial for the, for the mixing of the, uh, of the, in the combustion zone, right? Yeah, if you talk about combustion zone, uh, there's a lot of dirty stuff than this. <laughs> well, I, I don't think uh, it's that accurate. Since yeah, so you mean it, it is the server model itself is so, so bad. Yeah, yeah, at least yeah. it's not paid so much attention by the uh, combustion mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. It just copy what the, the code flow results. We do right. talk about it. And what kind of server models do you typically use? Use uh, scale similarity right? for velocity. The small ones you have for <laughs> from scalars, ah. for scalars, yes. Maybe it's a problem. No, in my view, I'm not. A, I, I'm not a have seen a professional guy, in LS, but I in, interact seriously with people which work in LS but in meteorology. My feeling that. It's interesting just if you put low resolve LAS, but with very good circuit mode. In this situation, it's much more how to say promised uh, comparison with uh, direct numerical models. So, in my view, 
very important to, to understand how old Smagolimsky subgrid model really good. Our, our feeling that maybe it's not true. And the main idea that if we discuss something similar to uh, should produce turbulence, that uh, Renault stresses is quadratic uh, in respect to shear. And in Smagarinsky model, we take just one possible combination. But if you try to study more carefully, you will find a lot of another contributions. And they equal zero according to calculation, just in 1D situation, which really boundary layer. If you've got, uh, say, something which happened in perpendicular direction, you will immediately produce second order uh, um, flow. Uh, second flow. Second flow, yes. What I've done. So it's very, how to say, important maybe take into account. We made it in not in LS, of course, in some large scale calculation, but maybe it's important for LS too. So quadratic, uh, terms that are quadratic in the last Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of possibilities from the symmetric point of view, and not only, we calculate in some model the approximation, these terms. Okay, uh, but those have never been used in any... In LS not, no, in LS not, but in some, how to say, scientific, scientific in dynamic study, we find, for example, some instabilities. Mm -hmm. Maybe that should be checked, of course, whether they really... Of course, they are borne out by... Uh, yes, yeah, they, 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 they produce results that are borne out by the NS. Uh, but from uh, what I know again from uh, experience in meteorology, if we got uh, direct numerical simulation, second, second order flow, it's possible to absorb for low result LAS without, uh, how to say, modified uh, simple model, it's possible. Simple and possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, some questions also, like in yours, uh, okay. just to stimulate uh, the discussion. Yes, please. Uh, well, my first question is, uh, uh, my question is, uh, is LES feasible for combustion simulations? Uh, this was a question actually was this question was asked in the uh, beginning of the 90s uh, by Stephen, Stephen Paul uh, and many others. Uh, we know that uh, LES is, uh, is very good for isothermal flows uh, because it can capture the energetic 80s and it can also, it seems to me, at least for combustion applications, it captures these larger non-turbulent structures coherent structures, we call it. For example, in, in this case, it's a very typical <coughs> combustion situation. In, in uh, military engines, you have uh, some kind of black body that to stabilize the uh, uh, reaction, pre-mix the flame. Runs, you only get this uh, mean flames. Well, LES, you can capture these larger structures. And this is, of course, physically very much, much more close to reality. I think that's the advantage of, of uh, larger dissimulation. But uh, uh, this is another example that uh, very unsteady larger structures, LES, uh, is much, much more advantage than, uh, than runs. Runs, you will simulate something completely different. Is it done in nature to simulate uh, this phenomenon? Is it already done or not? Or no? That's logical for us. In our equation, we've got something similar to this structure. We've got generation of vortexes. Mm -hmm. which is perpendicular to a uh, boundary layer. But as, again, unfortunately, meteorological people just try to, uh, to, to collect, uh, to accept this uh, conception is not so fast, of course, because it's psychologically very difficult. Because I heard that it's, it's not done. It's not, the, yeah, it's, it's, not, open it's not already done. Yeah, yeah. It's so a it's in, 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 in,
Ну, вы вы believe that we've got answer, but of course yeah, we be checked. No, you need a large computer? But from where? Yes. Uh, we don't need large computer for this calculation. We are not numerical guys, simple, you know. We, we, we find some instability which produce something similar to this. Well, this, uh, this thing in uh, combustion chambers has been a very hot topic. Because uh, you have a you have a slower flow coming into combustors, and then it's generate a vortex breakdown mm -hmm. like this. You have recirculation, and then you recycle you cy recycle uh, hot products. So basically, you stabilize the flame. This is a very common uh, technique used in gas turbines today, especially when you burn uh, lean premixed combustion in stationary gas turbines. Mm -hmm. But uh, the gas turbines have some problem. If you use this, because this big bubble is very unsteady. It's not turbulent. It's a coherent structure. Yeah. We call it the processing vortex core. It's uh, going uh, at low frequency. And then uh, runs cannot do this. And yes, it's, uh, it's very good at, yeah. at this. Uh, but uh, this is related with the vorticity diagram. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, in stratified media, so greater temperature also important here. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. what is actually the Kolmogorov scale in this picture? Mm -hmm. uh, this one. One. <laughs> that one. One centimeter scale. One centimeter. Yeah. 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 It's more, yeah? It depends. Smaller. Much larger. Much larger. Smaller. 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 Maybe even smaller. Smaller. Maybe smaller. 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 200 micrometers? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If 100 meters is a scale, energy contains scale and energy yeah. tends to be. So, much more scale from motion 10 to the 2 centimeters, the most number 10 to the 7. Mm -hmm. Why 10 to the 2 either? 10 to the, 10 to the 4? Uh, 10 to the 4, sorry, 100 meters. Mm -hmm. So, I think here it's about 10 to the 7 meters. So are we done with this? <laughs> okay, uh, now, uh, now it comes to, to real thing. Okay, uh, it's not finished. It's still... It's a quiet atmosphere. But it's not quiet atmosphere. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's a absorbed atmosphere. <coughs> okay, I'm still talking about cold flow. Uh, we'll talk about the asymptotic behavior uh, because uh, we have this type of energy spectrum, hopefully, when it's quite further, and then you, have, uh, you stop your LES resolution or filter here. You have resolved and unresolved. So uh, we talk about uh, why LES is good, because you have this asymptotic behavior. You, uh, you move to this direction, your LES becomes more accurate. Hopefully, uh, computer uh, double its uh, capacity every year, so we can do, do real thing. Uh, also, uh, because it's a logarithm scale, when it's like third, so this part of the energy integration of this area is very small. So we talk about uh, that if we resolve 70% of the kinetic energy, then uh, the, the, that 30% is hopefully not so important. Well, if you s resolve 99%, it's even better. But there is no, uh, this is an open question. Uh, what is the resolution? How do you test uh, grid uh, the filter dependence? You have a filter dependence, you also have grid independence. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul talked about the physical LES or numerical LES, I don't remember exactly. Physical LES means that uh, uh, you, you fix your filter size, you don't have the same filter size. Then you can talk about grid dependence. Because if you filter this, this boundary, then, uh, then you fix your, uh, you, you take away all the small scales. Then you have a grid uh, independent behavior. But if you, uh, your grid uh, goes together with this filter size, then the physical problem is not grid dependent. So you have really independent behavior. But anyway, this is uh, still uh, very good because we have this asymptotic behavior. 
Now, uh, in combustion, uh, we still can capture the energetic energies uh, flow in some part, not everywhere in the flow. We can still capture the larger scale structures, which are good. But reaction, uh, chemical reactions often are not resolved because chemical reaction occurs in different scales, or smaller scales. Chemical reactions occurs at the, uh, if we, in many, many applications, we found the chemical reaction scales are thinner than uh, chemical growth scales. Well, if we talk about chemical reactions, we, we have to distinguish different types of chemical reactions. If you use global reactions, one step, you have one time scale. If you use uh, 1,000 chemical reactions, you have 1,000 different time scales. Some of these short-lived species have very small time scales. If you want to resolve them. And also, uh, time scales are sometimes related to length scales. Short lived species, they only found in thin layers. So, uh, anyway, LES, because we don't even resolve the common growth scales, so we have no chance to resolve the chemical scales. So, the chemical scales are not asymptotically resolved, we don't have asymptotic behavior. This is uh, really the, the controversy uh, in the beginning of the uh, 90s. So this implies that it's very important to have very good subgrid mode. Yes. The whole thing is about uh, LES combustion. The main thing is uh, how you treat the chemistry. Yeah. It's not the, the mixing. Well, the mixing affects it, the chemistry. But can we turn back? And I'll face a problem with combustion. It's not, it's not only the temperature variation, but also the, if we consider, for example, the, the mixed flame, the velocity can change uh, in the one, one millimeter five times. Yes. Okay? And so, in fact, even for velocity field, the, the question, can we use or not the various? Because Kalmogoro doesn't work in this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, not, it's not the problem that I can, I can't to resolve Kalmogoro's case. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, ca I can't do it even for the temperature constant. Mm -hmm. It's the same problem. But I can to use some combustion of idea. But for combustion, it's not there. It's a question. It's, it's because good. each time, if you have flame that's flame surface, the velocity changes five times, for example. Mm -hmm. But in the worst case, it's even eight times. Mm -hmm. So the gradient, the velocity is not combustion of No, it's another reason for that. No. So, uh, it's not one as fast as. So, in my opinion, we have to add in your slide also the question how I have can some uh, bypass the common goal of Yeah, I have, I have, some, I have more slides. <laughs> uh, before we go into that point, it's very good that you... Because all the time we do, we, we do this speech, common goal of box, but for combustion, it doesn't work. No. Why do we forget that? Because we are engineers, uh, you know, compassion people by fast engineers. There was this uh, strong in no local problem. <coughs> yes, it's because we have a, because in Kolmogorov scale, the velocity doesn't change like in, in uh, flame, 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 flame. Because in flame, we have a very uh, sharp gradient sharp velocity. Gradient so so the dissipation is not controlled by Kolmogorov uh, process of cascade. This is, this is a principal question. Uh, and what about exact equation in this situation? Maybe it's not suitable to a gradient approximation with breath. It's another possibility if, if, if it, is, it means that we should even change basic equations, if you're right. I, I don't know. I, this is my question. I don't, I don't know the answer. But, what, uh, what do you mean basic equation? It means that if, if you take, for example, equation for, uh, for concentration of uh, some admixture, we have got diffusion term in this equation. If gradient so strong, we cannot use gradient approximation or thick law for uh, diffusion flux of admixture. But let me calculate it. It works. Ah, but you see, but it's another story. Another story. Because you've got so strong gradient and very 
uh, how to say, a small region. No, but it's the same region. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, if, uh, it's not uh, big in comparison with Lamina case. Uh, the, uh, the, so the same, you mean? Ah. It's the same. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. so not too bad. I don't think that's the question. Mm -hmm. huh? Lamina case works so. It's works for them in the so and, and the fixed law is not uh, the one that uh, we use. We use a uh, lot of detail the transport. The n times n matrix. What do you mean more detail? You take into account the dynamic flux? Detail the transport. Detail the transport. You, you mean different uh, for different different coefficients for different admixtures? Yeah. That's not exactly the you know this problem, this, this problem is problem. more uh, it's not a it's not a simple thick law. Mm -hmm. it is. It is okay. Something. Well, just to uh, to give you some uh, real thing, not just talk. Uh, this is an example of a, a very simple jet flow, jet flame. This flame is, is not possible to stabilize at a so high speed, 120 meters per second, because uh, the flame simply loses too much heat and it goes away. So a way to stabilize it is to have some small flames. Here, you have a low speed flames, one meter, uh, 0.45 meter per second flame. This is a laminar flame. You generate a lot of hot gases. Is it mixed? It's a pre-mixed uh, flame. It's a uh, five to one of oh, <laughs> 17, close to. And then the point is that uh, you learn we did the uh, uh, leaf measurements and can detect different species. You can see that uh, when we talk about scales, uh, different species are in different scales. And this CH is one type of radical which is always in very, in very thin scales. And this uh, formaldehyde, on the other hand, is in broader scales. So you have multiple scale problem. What happens if we increase the velocity from 90 to 120 to 150. Uh, one of these scales, uh, CH, is a red one. They remains at the same thin scale. On the other hand, it tends to increase. So this is a problem of uh, velocity or turbulence dependent. Uh, unfortunately, uh, these small scales, which are the one that uh, you have to have you have to resolve in order to really capture this the, the flame dynamics. And this is another scale, OH radicals. You have this you have these very thin scales, OH. Uh, typically in high radius number or high high intensity turbulence. And uh, the situation the flame is uh, is very wrinkled, we call it. Here we have this structure, wrinkle, but it's getting more difficult when the intensity of turbulence is so strong that uh, some part of the flame is locally quenched. There's no model today for those kind of things. That's a real challenge. Are these pictures all DNS? No, They're all, all experiments. PV experiments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I read your paper. It's a beautiful paper. Your results are very interesting. What is the recourse number here? Uh, 120, 150. Uh, I remember Damco number. Damco number is about uh, uh, more than 100. In this case, Damco number is uh, uh, more than 100. But it depends what species you are looking for. Uh, Damco number. It depends. Uh, for 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 my big either. Uh, Tom can now use integral scale turbulence, uh, integral turbulent uh, time over uh, mm -hmm. the lambda flame speed mm -hmm. estimated time. What is the integral scale here? Uh, we can say this uh, jet. Uh, we use the jet and length. Ah, jet and length. Jet, uh, fraction of the jet diameter. Okay. The jet uh, yeah. is uh, is about uh, the jet is uh, is very small, uh, two centimeter. Two centimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a paper in combustion flame uh, up here. The, yeah, in May. Can I give some comment here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
doesn't disturb you? No, no, no. no. It's a discussion. <laughs> because uh, I would like to discuss this very... I raise this question. It's, uh, I really like these results. In fact, what we see, even for huge velocity, mm -hmm. the reaction zone... Uh, yes. This is a very important. Mm -hmm. But it's not at all the problem. No. Because if we calculate the Dunkerley number, which is based on the reaction zone, it's a huge. It's about 100 maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if we look from the beginning, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The scale of the beginning is comparable with the jet scale. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if we both, for example, ca calculate the pollution, mm -hmm. if the pollution will be like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And for age, it's outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what we see here is that we can't, in fact, to, uh, to describe the usual frame. It's a typical flame, it's a typical situation for gas turbine. You know, we can't describe the, the usual frame using just one Dunkerley number. We have to utilize this, mm. the spectrum of Dunkerley number. Mm. And what is the problem? In fact, for example, we, we tell that Dunkerley number is huge, 100. So we can. Sorry, I was wrong. I was talking about, I was, I was meaning uh, Kalich 100. Kalovich is uh, number. Yeah. But even that could be the same, it's the same situation. Mm -hmm. In fact, what it's a your results, but I read and uh, I analyzed. So what is very important? For example, if we look just reaction zone, we can tell we can use some kind of tabulation like tables. Mm -hmm. But it's not for pollution. No. Because for pollution, for pollution we have to go outside of mm -hmm. and there are no tables. Mm -hmm. We have to resolve. Mm -hmm. But the reaction zone uh, is not resolved. It's not resolved. It's yeah, not it's possible. Not possible. It's this not is possible. the experiment. <laughs> it's it's the experiment. Okay. This experimental data. data. Very nice experimental I, data. I, I am still not able to predict this. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, it's a real challenge. It's a real challenge. Yeah. But the results are very nice. I like very much because they, it's a good illustration of the problem. Yeah. Because we, we need to combine some kind of tables with some uh, real calculation of a very, uh, very uh, uh, large uh, zones where the pollution can take place. So we can speak about that. Uh, I believe that's a real uh, good result. Thank you. <laughs> but unfortunately, I didn't do a major contribution to this. I just came uh, to explain a little bit. It's my colleague in Marcus Adinsko. You said this experiment is written in the last model. No, oh, I'm, I'm showing this uh, uh, for discussion. I borrowed the uh, uh, experimental results to discuss earlier. Uh, yes. The same question. Uh -huh. Is it possible <laughs> oh, yeah. to build this in LAS calculation if, this nice result? If I can Absolutely. provide such results, I would be um, happy. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good. We need to have a good special temporal resolution here. In fact, in your experiments, it's, uh, it's very nice. Yeah. It's a very good resolution. Even better than LAS. Much better. Uh, well, this, this is a 40 micron resolution. Here, yeah, 40, yeah, 40, 40 micron. micron. And what is Kalfagorov here, yeah. approximately? Um, 40 microns? Ah, so you close to Kalfagorov here. Before or after? Uh, in the flame. We must so <laughs> no, <laughs> What kind of experimental technique is used here for visualization? Uh, leaf. 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 Oh, leaf. Okay, I understand. Uh -huh. yeah. I have a naive question. Did we hear, didn't we hear just a minute ago that the length scales of the chemicals may be actually smaller than the common core scale? But that doesn't seem really yeah, Chemical scales. It's okay. Possible, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, some species are in larger scales, and but are in the smaller one. Yeah, so right. because you have, in this case you have 100 uh, different species. Mm -hmm. You yeah. only be able to, to, to have two of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we know that, in fact, uh, the theory of Gendovich uh, and uh, Kaminetsky, uh, they suggest that there are some surface mm -hmm. where combustion takes place. Mm -hmm. and there are some uh, layer where uh, we, we prepare by by heating, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and the lens, the characteristic lens of uh, chemistry zone, 
The resolution of your leaf is 40 microns, so it would be equivalent to a DNS. Mm -hmm. uh, how long would it take, or what is the resolution needed for an LES to give the same kind of result? If it was possible to do the calculation, it's not possible. What would be the, the resolution you need? To my, to my DNS? By, by LES. But you, to resolve this, you need a DNS. Yes. yes. Uh, you, you are not able for an LES modeling to do that. At today. Yeah, maybe maybe even if you have a huge, huge computer. But there are no models. You need, you need a model adapted to that. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so there is no model for that. No model for no model. Okay. I'm just showing this difficulty, this okay. real physics behavior. Um, yeah. but nevertheless, LAS can describe large scale structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, LAS probably so, can, if you're lucky, can describe this surface uh, topology. Yeah, but and some the average picture. It yeah. is smoothed. smoothed. Yeah, or smooth, yeah. actually, many times, it's a lot of the control of the LAS model. Yeah. You have numerical effects, you have model effects. You have the wrong treatment of the turbulence behind, uh, in front and after, all of this. But you get a qualitatively similar behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, 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 it's right. Somebody have tried to develop a mean field theory for this? The uh, mean? Mean field theory. Mean field. It doesn't work for it. Doesn't mm -hmm. work, why? There is a separation of scales mm -hmm. here. No, it's a... I, I try uh, to explain that there are no separation of scale. Okay. <laughs> Look. Look. Yeah, exactly that. Look. In fact, there are small scales. Okay? Yes. It looks it's very good. Yeah. It's a good news. But they are also a big huge scale. It's not huge scale. Yeah, I understand. So it, it, it changes. So not not ten. It's a because right. there are a few species in the yeah. intermediate. So if you would like to resolve maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, water, you can use them in uh, field theory. But it's not the problem now for this problem. We want to, to resolve the pollution, for example. The pollution, we have to go through all scales. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a challenge for combustion theory. Mean theory is very good, uh, I repeat, for, for water and for CO2. But it's no problem. My colleague, uh, he can uh, calculate very easily this case, but uh, it's not now the, the challenge. Okay, what, okay. what is your opinion about logic simulation? It is some kind of mean field theory, just with cut off into... But this is why it doesn't work here. Uh -huh. this, uh, the, the specialist uh, tells that it doesn't work. There are no <laughs> models. But we can <laughs> build good models. Well, I hope uh, you uh, Okay, now, now we come, come back to this figure again. So the point is that non symptomatic behavior and the, the chemical reaction scales are smaller than the chemical growth scale. Reaction zoom here. So this, what is the effect of this? Uh, well, there is uh, evidence that uh, this, this uh, generates turbulence, that this affects the turbulent uh, spectrum. Uh, even the largest, largest scale turbulence are changed because of this small scale behavior. So, uh, uh, there is some, something there, but it's not uh, really taken care of by, by the and these modelers, I haven't seen so many people talking about this. Uh, what is the mechanism behind this plane generated turbulence? I mean, physical. 
you have very thin layers, at least uh, you have some uh, feedback uh, through the, the gradients. And also you have some pressure, pressure gradient uh, interacting with the, the, the concentration gradient and so on. This, uh, this, this something there. And, and this turn that is generated, it's in the burn? It's, a, it's a, immediately, actually the pattern of recently had a review talk about this. Uh, after the flame, you found that the turbulence is generated. Yeah, yeah. Immediately after the flame run. So in the very high area then. And then in the later, later hot zone, turbulence is, is dissipated. Yeah, so mm. this is the key in turbulence. Mm. Yeah. I, I can uh, add some, some, something on this question. In fact, it's a very, very known problem which was solved by Landau in Russia and by, uh, by one uh, French. Very young, very young. So there are some vortices behind the flame. Because even we have uh, some potential flow before the flame, all time we have vortices behind the flame. But uh, the vortices uh, die very quickly. So at the moment, it's not clear, in fact, if we have a production of turbulence in a higher Reynolds number flow. It's, a, it's, a, it's not known. Nobody measured really the turbulence in this It's case. a controversy point. Yes, it's... Uh, uh, and most of the LES cannot predict uh, the pr production mm -hmm. because you have this uh, big area there. You can, make, you can tell if uh, root mean square velocity is comparable with uh, flame velocity, maybe uh, or less. In this case, maybe we have some influence of flame-generated turbulence. But if Rotten scale velocity is larger than the same, you can neglect it seems. What is the saying is still an open question really. But it's a question is old. The question is old. Is old. Because nobody uh, measures the turbulence in the uh, higher almost number flame. It's, it's really it's really small scale phenomenon. It's very small scale. It's hard to call. Can I ask you about the previous picture? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there, more, uh, there is, of course, energy, energy contained in the, in the chemicals. Yeah. And uh, can you sketch the, uh, the spectrum or the spectrum of the energy that is contained in the chemicals as a function of wave number? Is that uh, dominated at smaller scales, perhaps? The yeah. energy in the chemicals, it's, I think it is. It's right? generated at small scales. Yes. And how much, uh, how big is that amount of energy? In uh, the spectral amount of energy compared to E of K? I mean, one should be able to produce two spectra, mm -hmm. one for the kinetic energy um, and the one for the uh, internal energy. Yeah. The internal and energy is huge, but uh, how huge much? Huge small scales. Yeah. But how much is the uh, how much is uh, translated to turbulence? It's still, you need to have interaction through the shear, I guess. So the whole yeah the whole cosmological picture, of course, was assuming that we inject energy at large scales. But here we have, of course, uh, potential yeah. energy, so to speak, chemical energy. Yes. Present uh, somehow. At, a, at the smallest scale. At the smallest scale. Yeah. And this is actually the argument of Pope. He said that uh, Elias is hopeless. In 1990, uh, 22nd symposium. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, uh, I think it, uh, it has a very bad effect because uh, for, for four years nobody is doing Elias in combustion. And then uh, the engineers, of course, uh, would like to try everything. Uh, so they found that. Uh, they need to talk. Uh, because, because, as I said, this unsteady, unsteady behavior is captured. So it's very common practice. In uh, France, for example, uh, LES is very, it's used for, for gas turbine and uh, SI engines. Now today we, we use uh, internal combustion engines, similar to internal combustion engines using LES. Uh, and Luis, uh, if... Uh you compare LS results with uh, experimental mm -hmm. data. There is some agreement or not? Yeah, yeah. 
The good thing is that uh, even if you do very wrong, uh, you get a really nice result. <laughs> At least uh, 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 if you compare images and images, they look uh, look not exact but uh, similar. Cinema. Cinema. Cinema is very good. Huh? But you know, it's uh, if you compare uh, pictures. I mean, if you compare some quantitative figures for each experiment, yeah, we can find uh, some calculation which is good. <laughs> <laughs> but if we have no experimental work, ah, you, cannot you do, find you do uh, you. some LRS, doesn't work usually. Mm. Am, am I talking too long? No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I have some more slides, but uh, not too many. If you know answer, so, you can find it. <laughs> so, uh, practically, we do LES uh, combustion, and uh, we have different uh, approaches. Why we have different approaches? Because it's a very complex process, so whatever you do is reasonable. Uh, actually, that's a good thing. Uh, because, um, then you can argue that uh, your model is also wrong. Mine is wrong, <laughs> but uh, yours is also wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, we are more serious people here, so we should uh, really resolve this thing. Uh, there is now, uh, in practice, we have thickened flame. Uh, again, French guys are clever. <laughs> you might need a thickened flame model. I think you need this to have courage, because you complete, you change the physics completely. It's a thin process, but yeah. you think of it. So, yeah, so instead of uh, going down with resolution, you make... <laughs> you don't do the resolution, you think of the, the flame. Mm. And uh, it actually works well. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Surprising. <laughs> I'll come back to that. Well, we, uh, we, uh, we worked with uh, Christer. Uh, he's supposed to be here today, Christopher B. He's one of the early guys uh, applying LES to combustion. Mm. One of the Corey's guys. Uh, mm. Brave guy. Uh, so he used reduced chemistry and just put the chemistry there. Don't even talk about thickened flame or not. Because uh, numerically, if you do not, you, if you do not uh, consume the fuel in one cell, you will do it probably in the next cell. Mm. So effectively, you thicken it. You don't have to introduce the thickened flame. But once we introduce uh, the kind of Smogorinsky, uh, of course you think automatically. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if you use the equation with artificial viscosity, mm -hmm. it's automatically the thickening of the flame. Mm -hmm. The equation how, how they are connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? <coughs> you know, in the second uh, frame model, we do it uh, uh, explicitly. Mm -hmm. But if we calculate it, for example, in Smogolinsky, mm -hmm. it is done, but implicitly. In so how they are connected is the question. Yeah. But it's the same procedure. But I suggest that uh, perhaps when uh, Furby will be here, he yes, can give us. Uh, but I must say that uh, all these models are difficult to for, to use detailed chemistry because uh, we have detailed chemistry uh, competition effort is very high. So engineering the flame model has been very successful. We will talk about flame For those who are not so familiar, I can say that. Uh, Flame that is basically a thin layer, and this thing occurs in uh, viscous layer, viscous scales, so that uh, they behave like a laminar flame. So what you do is, you make no difference if you travel along this line, you see the same flame everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then you map this into a turbulent LES calculation. So basically, we, uh, I think it's consistent because we, we're not uh, doing the LES in this room. We're doing the LES in the far away from this plane. And then we try to put some uh, subway scale, this chemical heat release into this. And then you generate the gradient you want, velocity gradient. Uh, your, your velocity, uh, depending on the density ratio, your velocity changes uh, factor seven or ten or three. And that's gave, gave you some turbulence effects. 
And uh, Peters, uh, Nobel teacher from Germany, they, he, they, they are very fond of it, Flame uh, tabulation. In French, we have FPI, <laughs> or similar. Uh, flame surface density, that's a French uh, model, it's very good. Uh, in Norway, we have EDC. I, I would like to put all of them into flame that concept because you have to assume a very fast reaction. But the EDC now tried, or even long time ago, EDC tried to go to together with the chemistry. And, and Could you say about the abbreviation S? Conditional moment. Conditional moment the closer. Yeah, okay. Uh, and CFM. Uh, coherent flame uh, model. model. Okay. It's just a fancy name. It's funny. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> and dissipation. That's based uh, on. Dissipation. That's based on. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's a mixing control the process, mm -hmm. basically. But then they say, okay, you can cover the chemistry. Mm -hmm. But uh, it lacks the dynamic coupling. For example, what, what happens if you have very aggressive ADs here? This, this structure, uh, if you travel along the flames, they will not be the same. And uh, in fact, you cannot really tabulate uh, all the situations it will occur in the flame. For example, if you have aggressive AD, you will have local extinction mm. and reignition. And it's extremely difficult to tabulate today. So uh, this flame light uh, works very well. Furby and uh, my group, we, we simulated one case using uh, his fancy model and our fancy model. We compare the results. Our model looks very beautiful instantaneously. Uh, but uh, in, uh, if you look at the statistics, the mean field for this model is better. Very I mean, uh, confusing results. And it's published in conversion flame. I don't know why. but. Uh, the thing is that uh, here it reflects the fact that whatever model you use, if you are in the flame light regime, uh, you will not be too far off. Because the problem is, uh, is mostly controlled by diffusion, by mixing. So if you have a model that can treat the mixing rather reasonable, mm -hmm. then the sub risk model uh, would, uh, would not be uh, too low. Mm -hmm. Or would not be too sensitive for some cases. But uh, if, I mean, in the flame that models, if your colonist number is very small, mm. that's not working. That's then not it's going to be a fair to the run. No, the, the good thing is that uh, all laboratory experiments are for high, uh, high low, uh, high damper number, non-extinction cases, mm. because uh, you have to glue it very hard to generate local extinction. And this is why we, in Lund, we, we have this small jet. We want to blow very hastily. Mm -hmm. and look at the local extinction. Uh, typically, in gas turbine experiments and uh, other experiments, you don't have, uh, you cannot see it from the laboratory, laboratory scale. Mm -hmm. Local extinction. And uh, those are the cases where you have a complete uh, validation database. Mm -hmm. So then you don't distinguish. Quickly, uh, uh, linear AD model, I uh, heard uh, somebody here talk about it. It's one way that you treat uh, the turbulence uh, across the flames in a bit simple way, and then you couple the reduced chemistry. You cannot do the detailed chemistry. Reduced chemistry, couple it dynamically. So you don't have this problem, you don't have this problem. So I think this is uh, also a good way. Alan Hessen is coming, he is the inventor of this. And uh, unfortunately, Pope is not here. <laughs> He's the one that uh, tried to use a statistical way to describe the PDF. Uh, all the processes. To him, everything is, uh, is a, a running process, and then I, I shouldn't talk about it very much. So, before I finish, I want to show a, a movie. It's a, a hydrogen air flame uh, in, uh, in closer. Well, good thing about it, the door is not locked. So if you have high pressure, <laughs> it can open. So what happens is uh, you have these uh, very complex structures of flames. 
spot united uh, in the center and then you get a very bronchial structure. I believe this is a flanlet regime. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's still not so high intense turbulence. What is the color? The color is basically the, the CH, the CH radical. CH yeah. radical. CH radical. Mm -hmm. It's a chemical species. It's oh, pretty explained. No, it, it oh, no, no. It's visualization. 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 You have CH and you have C2. Mm -hmm. So the luminous C is blue color. Mm -hmm. The door is on the left hand side, right? The door is on uh, the left hand side. Okay. Yeah. My sketch was wrong. <laughs> well, last uh, thing, uh, I should uh, jump uh, over this. This is uh, the same uh, idea uh, as that. Uh, I would say that. Uh, Borgi had a very nice diagram showing all these turbulent situations, turbulent reaction situations. This is uh, uh, the ratio between flame length and uh, uh, the turbulence length, universe scale, and the flame reaction zone length. And this is the scale that uh, flame uh, turbulent velocity, larger scale, and uh, flame uh, velocity. So it's a theoretical way of marking everything, uh, all the physical uh, situations into uh, this diagram. Here we have a very thin reaction zone because lambda flames are uh, much smaller than the flow scales. And here we have very strong turbulence. So uh, when you are not having very strong turbulence, this is color which number equal to one. That means uh, everything occurs in thin layers, thinner than all the possible eddies. So uh, this is uh, where all the existing models work today. Because you basically can treat the chemistry uh, with some arrow and then uh, you do not see it because in the post flame zone everything is burned. Well, uh, in gas turbines, we, we are in here. And this is a place where your ADs are smaller than the reaction zone. So somewhere you will have aggressive ADs, which can quench the situation, quench the reaction zone. This is very difficult. Uh, well, ABS, uh, well, flame people say is that uh, if you are below, Kelvin should not below 100, you are OK. Your flame is, is still connected. You don't have so aggressive ages. And uh, our experience, recent experience, shows uh, that the, the, high, the, the highest velocity case, 150 meter, is uh, above this. We are, we are, we are, I think, uh, if I remember clearly, it's 130 or something. It's on the boundary. And uh, we see some uh, quenching. And for a long time, people don't care about this. Because uh, engineeringly, it's probably not relevant. You don't have flames burning in this, in this domain. But uh, today, we have uh, SCCCI, we have flameless. It's a fancy <coughs> name uh, uh, used in uh, modern engines. Uh, they may in this regime. So I think LES combustion for this part is a past history. LES Modeling in this regime is, is the new beginning uh, of today's interest. But we have, uh, even for usual, for supersonic combustion, for example, mm -hmm. we have a uh, cover is number very huge. Yes. And stabilization also, because in stabilization zones, the radiation velocity field is huge also. Like. So in any case, we have to, to analyze this region also. Mm -hmm. Because it's not uh, the volume way as a combustion takes place. But we are into it also where is the combustion is uh, stabilized. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I was talking about uh, the stationary yeah, low speed, stationary uh, uh, low speed uh, application. So that's all my slides. Okay, okay. Could, could thank you. Could you please uh, show the picture with experiment? I have a short comment. Just two minutes. Only. Yeah. Uh, I thought it will be your what's about the application of analytical approaches. Okay. Mean fields here. Uh, no, 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 just more. Uh, because here there is a community which is works in astrophysics. Okay, uh, this is Jeff. 
We perform experiments with jet. Uh, there is a jet, there is a flow, okay? And boundary of this jet is yeah, there are oscillations, oscillations. So there is some kind of mean boundary. And we study the front and here in the boundary, there is a very strong mean gradient of number density of particle. We put here, we put here uh, in this uh, jet micron, micrometers particles and study experimentally. Just we use particle initial velocimetry and we can measure special distribution of particles. And in, in the boundary there is a strong uh, gradient of non mean number density. This strong gradient of mean number density causes generation of fluctuations of number density by the tangling, because here there is a tubular flow. And we apply the same approaches, just calculate the equation for the two-point correlation functions of number density. And apply the theory of this boundary and compare it with the experiment. Two point. Hmm? Two, two point. point, yeah. So this implies that we can study small scales, like uh, people use in a small scale dynamo in astrophysics. The same approaches. And it really works well. So uh, we have to be more accurate about the application. I'm sure that it maybe it's possible the same things. There is a difference, yes, of course. Because you've got different spaces accumulated in different places. Of course, of course, of course. One this problem is much more complicated, but, ne but nevertheless, it's possible to, to use such kind of procedure to calculate two point collision function if it's of the number density. If it's a problem with LS, at the moment, yeah. all LS, we don't use some uh, special. Models. No, I all, all closure models, it's uh, like flamelet, like uh, the S, uh, all models, it's a statistic which is based on one point statistics. Ah, okay, okay. one point. So yeah. I speak about two points. Two points. Two points. <coughs> all LS, it's just for all yeah. some models. Of course, it's I agree. Just one point statistics. Yes, yes. So maybe we have to go to outside of two yeah, points of course, statistics, two but, point. but it's not done yet. Ah, it's not yet? It's done. not done. Mm -hmm. There is still something need to be done. Yeah, of course. Of course. But we have <laughs> the difference also because for maybe for your case, you know just uh, one place for this accumulation of particles. Yeah. But for combustion, we have a, a lot of things. Continuous, continuous spectrum of uh, scales. So the two points uh, correlation uh, models may be more difficult to, to do. Because, of course, here strong anisotropy, but nevertheless, in the case of jet, also we have strong anisotropy in uh, the, the perpendicular direction we can. But it's a good uh, idea that to use uh, some uh, special structure models. Yeah, because it's yeah. Uh, exactly. In the LS, at the moment, they, uh, they don't use this kind of model. Okay, uh, the, the same uh, question could probably already be posed for a planar front. We don't have to have this more complicated jet geometry. Would you agree? Can one have a more simple uh, geometry where one could, at least for the theoretical purpose of uh, understanding LES or mean field modeling, produce a uh, setup where one has a planar front rather than this complicated jet geometry? Uh, so a counterflow type? There is some uh, counterflow type. You can do uh, and hot gas, uh, and then you have a reaction. Uh -huh. uh, lovely opponent. But chat is uh, considered to be simple, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, a case that I am, uh, I'm in fact, uh, running now with DNS, and that could constitute the database for uh, mm -hmm. for comparison of LES, is, uh, is a channel flow with a plane. So you have turbulence. Okay. And the bring the flame. Okay. No anchor. So the, the flame is is uh, going in this direction more or less at the same velocity as here. So it's uh, so it's shifting. But it's yeah, it's moving. Yeah. It's a channel flow. It's a ball. Yeah. And how do you how do you calculate the 
the flow nearby your boat? With DNS? Yeah, yeah by uh, uh, having a high resolution. It's boat. not LES, huh? Yes, but what are those numbers in your calculation? Ah, not very high. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> not very high resolution. You will have my second flame yeah. yeah. You, you actually solve for the presence of the wall. Mm -hmm. In your DNS, you actually solve for the presence of the wall. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, not a periodic condition or whatever. No, no, no. No, no. Yeah, wall. The walls, and you wall are sufficiently yes. going to. I did last um, week in the other. Uh, I showed uh, an old calculation with a wall, but with an anchor flame. So okay. it becomes like a B. Yes? A B flame. Yes. Because it was anchored to have it statistically stationary. But now uh, I'm trying something more difficult with the <laughs> flame that I try to stabilize in the middle, but obviously it doesn't move. Uh, so it so you have to. Yeah. You can simulate uh, the quenching distance. Yes, yes, yes. That's uh, the wall quenching is uh, perfectly captured. But how uh, regarding today? How many? You have some slides too. Yeah, I'm very far away from all that. I can talk about. It. What I'm thinking about. Oh, well, I was uh, wondering if we should see your slides and then uh, we have lunch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So, what is the story? Uh, we were first concerned with the evol evolution equation models, asymptotic modeling of flames of um, very um, thin flames. And uh, we had some experiments of experimental results of extending flame, three-dimensional extending flame. This is an old result of 1969. And uh, in my lab, there are at least two researchers, two researchers working on extending flame. So we had a very simple model to mimic this kind of behavior, this kind of extending flame. I'm just telling the story. Okay, so we made some DNS. Uh, Eric had made this kind of calculation. So we had uh, homemade three-dimensional finite difference code, compressible code, reactive flow, very simple. And this calculation takes uh, 110 million points. So it's not a huge calculation. And 60,000 hour, uh, 60, hours, 60 hours. Only three centimeters. Okay, so we thought, why can't we do some LES for that or for other stuff? Because it's very, very extensive. Uh, what fuel is this? This is uh, propane, I think. Propane. But not like that. One, 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 only one. One, 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 one single thing. Is it, is it a cube? It's a yeah, it's a cube. It's and a three centimeter one. cube. We, we ignite in the center. One, one centimeter. centimeter. One centimeter. Three centimeters. Three centimeters. So it's very three, three, three. three. You condition uh, the condition. Outflow. 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 Outflow mm -hmm. condition, and Eric will, will talk about that in, at the end of the month. So this is, a, I would say, the, we can do even bigger calculations. Okay? But, but that, that was not the point. It's too expensive for us. Because we also wanted to uh, apply this code for other applications, for ICE, International Combustion Engineering for uh, meso combustion, uh, centimetric uh, combustion. 
So that's the story. So we had some ideas. In my old, very old time, I used to work when, uh, with the, the same lab of Vladimir uh, in Poitiers a long time ago. Uh, I used to work on evolution equation of the michelson siemashinsky type. Siemashinsky. So these are very, very, uh, I would say, cheap calculations. It costs some hours, three, four, five hours. So it's not the same. Uh, challenge to be able to simulate this kind of flames, the extending flames, than the other one. The other one is millions of hours, um, maybe not millions, millions of points, and tens of thousands of CPU hours. Here it's a few hours. And here you can see that maybe it's, well, it's more complicated than that, say 20, centi 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters. So it's not the same size the same object. But this is, these are crude models. But, you need but they work. But you need uh, to have to read resolution to... Only for, the for the surface. Mm -hmm. Only for the surface. That's the point. You need uh, adaptive cells. Then. We need something like 2 million points on the surface. Mm -hmm. I anticipate on my talk tomorrow. <laughs> okay? So for the surface here, we only need some million points. Two, one, two, three million points. So this is well known, I would say. This is uh, mm -hmm. old work. And just, exp just to explain what kind of equation we're, look we're solving, if this kind of, of equation. F means the uh, deformation of the front. It's you have some kind of front equation. Front equation, the equation for the front. <laughs> it's based on asymptotics. Small density contrast asymptotics, and if you have the mean, that's the point. If you have the mean flame shape, the mean flame shape, you can write an equation for the from deformation f. Okay, but you need to know what it means. <coughs> that's another point. So, what we did it what with uh, the uh, I would say the extension of this equation in three dimension. In for expanding things, that that would be the talk of tomorrow. My talk for tomorrow. We managed to validate the approach in, uh, I would say, quantitative way. It's very similar to DNS results. The result we obtain with this kind of simplified, very crude modeling equation is very close to DNS results and to experimental results. Yeah. At Korea, we also have experimental results. This is a question. This is some kind of normal equation, or it can be derived from the first principles? I will derive it tomorrow morning. <laughs> I will show you how to derive it tomorrow morning. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Okay? We can, uh, uh, I will show you, we, we did it at the third order. Sivashinsky did it at the first order, second order, third order, we did it. And maybe there are some uh, Russian people working on the fourth, fourth order. But no papers. Okay, I will show you. But you need uh, some need control <laughs> parameter for the lens. For the for the for the no, for the shape. For, for the, the lens scale. For the length scale. Like yeah, you have this uh, sign. We, we need time. this. We need this. And this uh, it's uh, yeah, we have to tune some parameters to to have this wave lens uh, wave lens right. Uh, the wavelengths? Yeah, yeah. It's a periodic uh, wave like uh, Yeah, it's, it's like that. Okay? Okay. And this is given by the equations. It's good? It's, it's, it's out of from that. The equation. Yeah. It comes directly from this solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Lambda that specific length scale, the wave number, you mean? Yeah, it's so more it's more complicated than that because the uh, lambda Darry operator I see, okay. has, has, has no length scale. It has no length scale. So the only length scale comes from number. this number, yes. k natural, yes. uh -huh. of course, sure. which is linked to the uh, match time length, uh -huh. which is also linked to the, um, flame. the flame thickness. The same idea as in the short term for Mushkinsky equations and 
the, how you say programmable? Programmable yeah. machine Yeah, it's Michelson Sivashinsky equation anyway. It's something like Michelson Sivashinsky. This kind of equation has also astrophysical uh, applications for a supernova. From, from the game. For? Because it's from. Yeah. From. from. It's a, it's a thin from. Yeah. And the, the delta. The density contrast, the alpha equals delta rho over rho, is very small for supernova. For flame, it's not so small. But it works. It works. Even not small. <laughs> Even for not small uh, density contrast, it works not. So another work would be to have the same equation for plane fronts, but three-dimensional plane fronts. This is for 2D plane fronts. We have it for 3D spherical fronts. We have it for 2D cylindrical uh, fronts. Uh, and quite recently, in 2007, Bruno Donnet derived an equation for 3D plane fronts. And we need to have to make uh, some DNS to validate the model, to validate the coefficients. To tell this coefficient gives uh, results compatible with DNS with and with experiments. But there are very few experiments with plane fronts quite hard to have very painful. Okay, what that is the context? Yes, yes. the solution is Kawakiku. The solution, the solution of this equation. Can, it, can, can, can be uh, Yeah, we, we know uh, no we know the solution by pole decomposition. But it's not the it's solution. Yeah in, in reality here in, re in reality here you have uh, an additive forcing. But if there are no forcing the solution if there are no, the, the solution is known. The, the deterministic. Deterministic. And in, in, even it's more than deterministic, you can derive it analytically. Okay. okay. It's pole, pole decomposition method. It's known since uh, some years. But if you have here a turbulence, uh, a noise, a turbulent noise, uh, of course the solution will not be the same. <laughs> of course. And that's, that's the interesting point. That then you need Memories. <coughs> but they are not very expensive. But you you do the calculation without forcing. Yeah, with forcing. With ah, forcing. forcing. With forcing. This, these are done, for instance, with uh, uh, random noise, with white noise, okay. uncorrelated, uncorrelated noise. And it gives suckable flame, observed by Dalgovic, uh, cauliflower flame. So the behavior is... But the scale of this uh, perturbation is linked with turbulence or not? Not yet. That's the point. That's the good point. Is the cells, are the cells given by the integral scale of turbulence, for instance? Because you, you believe that. Use some scale. We, we believe that, of course. We believe that somehow when the, the integral scale of turbulence will interact with the uh, cell size, natural cell size of the cell. And the Saturation, you will feel saturation. Uh, we hope that this kind is saturation. That means that you have cells going this way, and these cells become this way. Because you know, and this size will be given in the atmosphere. You, you know, maybe the experimental data of uh, I don't know. The, I forgot the name of a Russian uh, Russian scientist who who received the fractal structure. Fractal structure. I, I forgot his name. So the scale is growing all time. We, um, <laughs> there, there's a Russian people oh. named uh, Kostintsev. Ah, Gost Kostintsev. Kostintsev. Uh, uh, maybe uh, 20 years ago. Uh, or maybe 30. Maybe 30. Yeah. 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 We give some, uh, mm -hmm. some uh, data to uh, ex express the um, fractal structure on the front. But what is, so, what is strange here, because uh, as I know from experimental data, there are practically no turbulence. Okay? And they yeah, but uh, Sivashinsky uh, believed that the, the flame created some turbulence. Anyway. So, but that, that is, that in this case, there are no uh, perturbations, uh, no, no forcing. So you have no forcing, you so have, yeah, but there are always some noise. But maybe may the uh, equation of Sivashinsky uh, is not good for this case. Sivashinsky and Julien believe that even um, atomic the, noise would be sufficient. Atom, even atomic noise would be sufficient you, to You be put directly Sivashinsky equation, equation and you believe that it's the nature, but maybe it's not Sivashinsky. Yeah, of course. For this case. <laughs> but 
Now, but mathematically, if you do very, very small noise, it will grow exponentially anyway. So even atomic noise, which is it's numerical noise, it's numerical noise it's it will be exponentially growing. This flame looks very Which one? The bottom. This one? Yeah, it looks very much like a uh, hydrogen flame. There is another equation for hydrogen flame. Because for hydrogen flame, uh, the equation is different. Because you have Thermodiffusive instability. Yes, yes, that's what I was referring to. So that, the question that looks very much like it. I mean, yeah, th that this would be more <coughs> methane or propane. <coughs> this is not because we are, it's, it's only mathematics. Mm. But you can tune it. It's more for methane or propane flame. <laughs> this but is we have the idea to uh, to apply uh, the same kind of equation mm. for hydrogen. Mm. In the, in the, Car maker, French car maker. Yes? Is this related to hydrodynamics? Completely. Completely. It's, uh, I will talk about it. I, I think that's, there's always some context between young people are, are afraid. <laughs> <laughs> this equation, oh no, it's too, too hard for us. <laughs> yeah, the Landau Dario equation, the Landau Dario term is this one. It's the Landau Dario parameter. We can derive it tomorrow. Okay, so this equation is very seems very crude, is very simple to solve. And my idea, well, well the idea, because I talked to also with other people about that, would be is it would it be possible to apply this kind of approach at the subgrid scale level? Absolutely feasible. Absolutely feasible? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we, we have model for the mean flow. Okay. For the resolved flow. So th that's the whole story. So that's the whole story. Could be interesting. The whole story is that we developed it's the thesis by Eric Albin, a staggered, collocated, five different solver. We wanted to validate this with experimental results and with, with equation, evolution equation modeling. Okay, for 2D steady plans, 2D and 3D spherical plane, cylindrical and spherical plane. This is done. Okay. Uh, Eric Alvin work, PhD work. We want now to validate for 3D planar flames. And would all that uh, be possibly used as uh, a model for separate scale modeling for RANS or LES? To say, that is to say, we have. Say an LES grid, okay? You have the mean flame position. Now the point is, what is the size of the LES grid? And then, do we have something like that for the flame topology? So the idea was to access the flame topology inside the, the, the subgrid. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Because usually, the models used uh, for the moment, even the flatnet model, uh, are based, for instance, on the uh, flame, uh, flame surface density. Exactly. So you don't have access to the flame topology. Mm -hmm. no. You only have, you know that inside the, the cell you only have a kind of sigma somewhere. And how, how do you give to your flame surface the influence of the turbulence? That's, that's, that's a good sound. Excuse me, I'm at the subgrid level. That's the point. That's the, the question. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, the sigma, you access it like that. You can calculate the sigma. I would say you even calculate more because you have more information than only the sigma. Mm -hmm. But say you have uh, an LES code based on the sigma uh, surface density model. You took off this equation, you replaced by another equation, and that's it. You only changed, and the coupling is already done, I would say. Mm -hmm. You only give the sigma to the, to the modeling, and it, will, it gives you back mm -hmm. uh, the noise, the turbulent noise at the subway scale, the coupling mm -hmm. at the subway scale. I'm not expert, so I'm not, I don't know exactly how it is done in ADS cup, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. But the idea was only to, and then you can have access to the flame topology, and maybe you can have 
all, another coupling, a stronger coupling between them. Yes? I, I see that here is a problem. In fact, tell me it's a problem for me. In fact, your, your topology will be dependent on the resolution. Yeah, but what is the physical of topology? What is the? In reality, we don't know because your topology will be dependent on the resolution, special resolution. So we will have some nice. You mean the flame topology or yeah, the flame to flame yes. topology? Because you told me. Yeah, if you if you have this, yes. uh, this, uh, this it's not okay. It's not okay. But is, but why you are sure? Why you are sure? Because, because my just thing before, is infinitely thin. But just before you told the, the, the topology is dependent on the scale of a fossil. Yeah. Okay. So if if this is a case, your topology will be dependent on the special resolution. Okay, because sub scale uh, is a turbulence. How do yeah, you change, uh, uh, choose the grid size? So you you change one problem by another problem for me. It's like that. The point is uh, maybe this approach is more suitable for RAMS type where you have huge but in any case, in any case, if if because it's not it was my question, if is the scale of perturbation is dependent or not of the of the of the fossil? Okay. If the scale yeah. of look, you have a result. For example, if the answer yes, yeah. so this nice feature is dependent on the the length scale of the fossil. I don't, okay. Ah, okay. Okay. I so in this case, you have a some sub grid scale. Yeah. Okay, and this nice picture will be will be dependent on the on the resolution because it, it will be forced by this scale. Okay. Uh, yes and I, no. I, I don't yes know. Yes and no. It's my question. Yes and okay. no. Uh, if the no, if the the forcing is very high, if the forcing is very high, it will impose to the flame its own scale. But uh, how to prove that? How to prove that? Because you know that you change, for example, you change. I have one computer, okay? Yeah. But in my uh, university, the computer is maybe more, more smaller, so yeah. I, I am obliged to take bigger yes. ones, okay? In this case, I will have a turbulence which is more intensive. Yeah. So, what will be this my picture? If the turbulence is too, too high, yeah. this is the, the model is not correct anyway. <laughs> but from what length is correct? Uh, if, I, no, to answer the Nikkelsen Sivashinsky model, if the, if the turbulence is too high, if you're not really in the flamlet regime, the model is not correct. Anyway, so it's only valid for moderately turbulent flames. Low amplitude equation. Low amplitude equation. Yeah, there's a. It's no low amplitude. It's uh, yeah, the amplitude can be can be can be large, but the U prime the, the noise it cannot be so too, too high. So anyway, at the it's not it's not universal. You cannot yeah. replace DNS uh, sixty thousand hour DNS by a two hour calculation. It's not possible. You you have to lose something. So okay. Mm -hmm. The question is also how to choose the grid size. Because maybe at the small scale, uh, I would say the, the turbulence felt by the flame at the small scale is not so high. And the turbulence is very high at the large scale, but at the very small scale, is the turbulence so strong for the flame felt at the small scale? No, there is. Uh some theory behind it. There is a Gibbs uh, Gibbs scale, uh, which is a scale that uh, the local flame speed yeah. equals to the turbulent uh, speed. Below that scale, you don't okay. have so much interaction. Okay. So your model, uh, my question this is this point. This point is crucial. <laughs> my question is, uh, uh, if I give you a cut of lens. Yeah. Below which you don't have more scales. Yeah. Can you impose that into your equation? And then you will 
has one, one dependence. What I need for my equation is very few parameters in it. And you have, okay, the alpha is given, it's physically given. You have the k nickel, which is in fact the length, the same uh, thickness. And you, well, you have nothing more. Nothing more. Here you have the noise, which introduces scale. But I mean, if this equation is correct, that means if you, the noise is not too high, you don't need anything else. You don't need anything else. And the, the equation will select. Here you have a spectrum of scales introduced in the, into the equation by the, the forcing. And the equation will select a bandwidth of uh, scales. That's what, that's what the, the, the flame does. The flame would select, if you give here um, a band of uh, a spectrum of uh, length scale, this equation would select a, a, a band. But does this mean that if you are below the Gibbs scale, then you will totally turn off the forcing on the right hand side? Or? Any, th they're always a forcing acting anyway. They're always, even a small forcing, but it will it will um, force the equation, even very small. To, to make your model really uh, useful, you really have to consider differential diffusion, <coughs> counter <coughs> effects that tends to stabilize. Uh, you have Lewis number larger than <laughs> larger than unity. Yes, which is that critical um, that critical derivative. This is something else. Then, if you have all these things in into your model, it will be useful, more useful. The, the, I would say this is only an idea. It's, it's, <laughs> not, it's not uh, completely done. It was uh, to answer the question, what about LES? I, I don't do LES. For the moment, I don't do LES. I have some uh, project to do that with this kind of subgrid model. But I, don't, I still don't do it. How to calculate the mean position of flame? That's why the question. <laughs> uh, how? 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 I would suggest to use G equation. Oh, G equation. Oh, but it's not correct. The <laughs> mean position is not correct. Yeah. With mean with mean velocity is not correct. And you have to couple it. And you have to couple it with the shape. Does it coincide with the mean velocity flow? Because if, you if we look the G mean G mean equation, yeah. there we we want to calculate the mean position using what parameters? Mean velocity. Mean velocity we solve scale. It's not sufficient. Mean velocity is And you need to take into account the uh, sigma. Feedback. Yeah. Feedback. You need the feedback, of course. Feedback to the mean. V, but mean velocity is not sufficient because the mean flame, mean flame is not converted with mean velocity. Uh, this is the question. Uh, no, the what is the parameter is appropriate? Because uh, for mean position, we, it's not sufficient to... Yeah, I understand this, but for, what is the velocity is appropriate? You need to calculate this velocity... If, if, we take, if we take the, the simplest case, yeah. one, the flow, okay? It's a, the, the flame like that. In this case, it's a velocity which uh, it's a velocity in the infinity uh -huh. of all flow. It's, so it's not local velocity, uh -huh. mean velocity, but it's velocity which, which is very far from the flow, from the flame. The mean flow uh, velocity is not enough. It's not, it's not so You need to have it's, this... Uh, it's erroneous. It's, it's not enough. It's erroneous. Yeah. It's, we it's can't convert the mean velocity, the mean position of flame. Mm -hmm. We don't speak as a department about that. Yeah, I know. Fact, yeah. This is like an uh, inertial particles inside the turbulent flow. The velocity of inertial flow doesn't coincide with the velocity of flow. We need to get the okay. <laughs> okay, but uh, <laughs> okay, but, well, well it's that's a, it's a question. Another issue is how to couple that with uh, complex chemistry. Yeah. I would say the the basic idea <coughs> was okay. I have an equation for sigma. I change the equation. That's it, and all the all the the rest is the same. Does it work? Uh, I was I would uh, comment. You, uh, you, uh, your model will not improve that much of uh, uh, the, f the species prediction. 
Yeah. Free now you can only give access to topology. That's it. it yeah, you will free, you will give more correct information about the flip self is basic. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not done. It's not clear. It's and, not it's, and there it's is also clear. clear. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. It's not clear. I hope. But it's not clear. And yeah, it's, it's quite straightforward to, to couple the preliminary chemistry. I mean, this is research project. This is not <laughs> done research. <laughs> let let, let, let uh, it make clear. This is idea. That's why I'm here to discuss. Okay. Uh, another interesting point is, would be to, because of the Nikolson Sebastian equation can be modified to uh, introduce. There was different uh, of unity effects, mm -hmm. thermodiffusive effects, Thermodiffusive. and it would be interesting. The equation would not, would not be the same. Thermodiffusive instability, mm -hmm. and for hydrogen, for instance, it would be interesting. I don't. I'm not sure that uh, plane based models are taking into account this. Effect. No, I, I, I'm quite sure they're not taking <laughs> into account this effect. So it would be interesting. But first, we have to. Be sure that this equation is equivalent to this one. And then after, yeah. we will be able to say, OK, this is validated. OK, mm -hmm. now we can try to modify to get uh, hydrogen. And well, well, you have to, to insert in your model the fact that in the cusps there, yeah. you will have extinction for, uh, for, for, uh, for um, yes, low equivalence ratios. And you will have uh, I'm not sure the equation would be able to do that. I'm quite sure that it is probably yeah, because yeah. local extension. That's yeah. why how to choose the grid size is important. Mm -hmm. Because do we have something like that or do we have something like that? Very or simple class. Or do we have something like well in hydrogen that. <laughs> more, even more in maybe. hydrogen the flame would look like this. Yeah. There yeah. would be extinction. Flame caps. Yes. Flame caps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Local extension. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you have some. Uh, okay. 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 Well, <laughs> proposals. But we don't have extinction. It's uh, time dependent. We can't. Uh, we can't do to do all this picture in this case. No, no, it's not time dependent. Well, <laughs> it is time dependent. Uh, you, you always have extinction here. Yes, I, in uh, hydrogen. Yes, I agree. But it's not possible to, to draw some uh, topology with this kind <laughs> of uh, theory because it's temporal effects. Temporal. Do you mean that this distance increases with time? Or no, no. Changes? It's changing. No, changes. no. No, 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 no not it. much. Uh -huh. If we if we, if we look at the calculation of Bell, yes, we calculate it. So yeah, it's, it's moving. It's uh, not it's not fixed. No, it's, it's not fixed. Yes, it's time dependent. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, one of the ones. Unfortunately, these are, for instance, just uh, uh, a flame issued in the mesocombustor that I showed uh, yesterday. It's not the whole calculation, it's only some blocks of the calculation. And even this is very, very expensive. That's why I want to draw this. It's a very small combustor, mm -hmm. uh, about six cubic centimeters. Uh, even that, it's very expensive because we want to run very, very long calculations. Yeah. This is from the density? Uh, yes, I think so. And it's colored by... Um, why? By uh, mass fraction. Oh, mass fraction. It's colored by mass fraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, this is a simple calculation, I would say. It's, no. it's a cubic. It's, it's a cubic. It's not very easy. Mm -hmm. But it's, we need very much computational resource because we, want, we would like to run a calculation as several, uh, not a second, but say several uh, hundred of milliseconds. And it's very expensive. If it's only, uh, say, uh, I think it's something like 40 million points, it's not a huge calculation, not a billion points, but we want to run it for a long time to make statistics. That's why we need this mm -hmm. You have a lot of wall effects. We have a lot of wall effects. That's, 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 that's very tough. 
because it's compressible. Mm -hmm. Because we like to <coughs> see the coupling between acoustics and uh, compression. And this one mm -hmm. experimentally we observe the this is another project. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you for taking this. Ah, thank you. Uh, well questions we have had <laughs> all the time. So I guess uh, uh, we close this session and uh, maybe I uh, will go. Oh, okay, you have some, some comments. Yes. In fact, uh, we speak, uh, we discuss mainly the species problem to, to clone. We speak the subject mode of the whole time about the flame position. But for me, uh, the problem is also, I, I told before, <coughs> it's a velocity field. Mm -hmm. Why? I try to move the chance what turbulence I mean. Uh, in fact, when we, uh, when we look some some uh, some cell after the, uh, after filtering, okay. So each time we uh, we write the equation for species with some sub lip model, like flame lab, like a, a lot of models at the moment, second flame. But now we speak about the velocity field. Because all time we use like Smagorinsky, like maybe more complex model. So all time we, we suppose that inside of the cell, the turbulence is like is a classical case. But it's not the case because we have a flame position. So if the velocity here is, uh, I don't know, uh, is burned, unburned uh, here, burned, the difference can be fine time. Yeah. So we have a very, I, I speak uh, for simplicity of it. We explain because it may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Jet flame may be not like that, but the mix flame is uh, usually in this situation. So we have the dissipation which is not controlled by Kolmogorov process. So in fact, strictly speaking, we have we have to modelize also the velocity field with some kind of some modeling. So you need because we, we can't describe not only species but velocity field also. Why why we suppose that the Mixing is controlled by a Kolmogorov relation inside of this cube because the structure velocity is quite different from from Kolmogorov. It's not true, but for me, uh, really strange. You mean that there is additional equation for the front because uh, <coughs> additional equation for the velocity. Because yeah. uh, here, look here, we try to to, to describe a very very fine uh, structure. Of on the surface, okay? Yes. At the same time, we do nothing about velocity field. Nothing. In fact, we, we, you don't speak uh, if uh, the, the, the Sivashinsky equation is obtained in this limit. It's like one. Yes. So interval over rho is yes. about zero. So it's, 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 it's practically <laughs> bound. So but we need to connect uh, the velocity of flame with the velocity of fluid. So in fact, uh, we have to right, yeah. we have to do something with velocity field which convect uh, our see. flame. Why we suppose that it's converted with a <laughs> with a Smagorinsky flame? It's a, for me, it's it's, it's really the point point of for so discussion. So this is unsolved problem. What? This is an unsolved problem? No, it's an unsolved problem. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a yeah. question for... For the answer, for the, the median sensation equation is the thing within this structure. This structure is larger velocity. I'm not, not talking about the thermal structure. The yeah, 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 structure yeah, is yeah, correct. Yeah, structure yeah, structure yeah, and then it can be yeah, given good result. The structure is the same. The coefficients are not the same. Yes, but velocity is uh, changing uh, in this case. Kind of... You impose a discontinuity. So no, it's changed because of the mass calculation. It's like a row yeah, 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 shock wave. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. the yeah. 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 So this is a yeah. point for discussion. Yeah. 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 The second point. And its effects. What is the grid side? No. What is the Kolmogorov scheme? Where is the Kolmogorov scheme? Here. I don't know. Usually this Kolmogorov scheme is inside. Usually. Even smaller than the flame? Than the flame thickness? No, if uh, I speak about less, if uh, you calculate less, usually, yeah. usually, yeah. usually, I speak about this case. 
And as a point for discussion, uh, it seems to me, because of the people who do uh, less, I don't, I don't do less. But what I want to, to look, uh, because every time we have a good comparison with experimental data, I mean, mean yeah. velocity, mean uh, species, and so forth and so on. Very, not so often, we have a root mean square. Not very often. But never, never, you have uh, some special correlation. Never. And I, I try to, to ask every time you have a correlation of what? Of, for example, of species. Of species. Because this is very important, this information is very important to understand the structure of the, of the, of the, of the flame. Because you know that we can have the same uh, root mean square, but the structure of the flame can be quite, quite different. And uh, th this is important, for example, for pollution. Because your experimental data show very, very clearly that the structure of the flame is very complicated. It depends what, what we want to study. If the, if the maybe uh, mean temperature, we can calculate that with a very simple model, okay? But if we want to calculate NO, NOx, I, I, I don't know. Or CO. CO. It's CO it has, may, maybe it's even, uh, even more complex because CO is like formal begin. So the, 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 the thickness of the layers will be more important than the others. So maybe it's interesting to calculate less and to, compute, to, to do some, to, to show some special structure of the flames. Even there are maybe no experimental data, but in your case you can do this information. You can, you can calculate this information. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. For example, we, we can discuss your nice pictures because we can, uh, we can analyze not only the mean values, but also some correlation of the pieces. <coughs> and we can compare what is the correlation, what's the difference of correlation for thin flames and the thick flames? Because this information can help us to, to do something with LAS. At the moment, just one point statistics. I think uh, this information can be available from TNS data. Yes, but from experimental data. You, you can calculate that. But in experimental data, you also can have a two point. Yes, they, they can. They yeah, can do that. If you have data, you can calculate mm this. -hmm. And last, last point. It seems to me that uh, if we look uh, at the theory of multi phase flows, yeah. there are some uh, good ideas maybe can be taken from multi flows. flows. Because if we have some surface between two faces and in, and each faces you have a, maybe some Kolmogorov turbulence, like Kolmogorov. So why we don't use this idea from uh, multi-phase flow? Because in this case, you suppose that the one Kolmogorov turbulence here, the second Kolmogorov turbulence, and some surface which separates two Kolmogorov. Of course, maybe in this case, we have to, to calculate two two times equations, but the physics will be more, more clear because all problems with the surface, this, this flame kills <coughs> all. It kills the Kolmogorov. This, this is a problem. And maybe we have to speak about this idea also of the two-phase flows because it resembles. Mm -hmm. Why not? Thank you. I suggest that we take yes, yeah. uh, the discussion uh, next time with some more people, I guess. Yeah, if, if we also may want to think about additional topics for discussion, if, if, if another session could be, for example, on Thursday morning. Thursday morning. And, um, I mean, Vladimir raised a few points, uh, but there could be other points uh, that we uh, may want to discuss. Uh, I think uh, Laszlo is coming on Thursday, mm -hmm. and uh, Christer will be here also, yeah. I guess. Uh, maybe we can continue this topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sounds like a possible idea, yeah. To do 
I mean, especially because Vladimir is the point of uh, determining certain uh, correlations, for example, yeah. between different species. Maybe you can determine um, or make an attempt to determine some of those mm -hmm. by Thursday mm -hmm. and show those. That would give more detailed information, of course, about the nature of the planet. Yeah, and I mean, also, if uh, <coughs> the others have uh, other suggestions, yeah. probably yeah. that this will not. Necessarily, That sounds also cool, yeah. So if I write down compressibility. Well, we have talked about acoustics also that we may discuss with you for either next week or. Yeah, you mentioned, of course, acoustics in connection with the acoustic flame and stability. Well, with acoustic generation. Well, that one. Yeah, but, but that, would that be related, do you think? That's something physical, really. Yes. Yeah. Physics. Yeah. Which would be very interesting, but not really related, I would say. Mm. Well, in fact, if uh, one of your colleagues, uh, <coughs> the Guichard or Rebellion, would. Uh, Rebellion, I, I can contact Rebellion to come. Yeah, okay, we can talk about this, and then uh, we set this up for next week. Next week. Yes, yeah, so that I can have images. He was supposed to come here. Uh, he yeah. was supposed to come here. Yeah, it was a That's why I came. <laughs> <laughs> but I can ask him to come. Okay. Yeah. In two or three days or two days. Yes, yes. So it would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, the, the stuff that Vladimir, uh, that, that Igor mentioned about enhanced uh, or de decreased type of diffusion. In yeah. for large uh, numbers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. But, uh, How we, we, we would like to give this just for the nineteen or of uh, thirteen? No, nineteen. 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 Yeah, I'm gonna think of there. I think there is an article on the nineteen. Ah, there there is not. But then on the twenty is the twenty first maybe? Yeah, uh, I will check it out when no, you okay. talk so and you try to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Then thank you a lot for today and thank you for
Ah, c'est grave là. Interesting just compare different analytical approaches in Turkmen combustion and to in, in Turkmen dynamo. Yeah, 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 especially right. for the people who are here, yes. astrophysical, and for your colleagues. And, and, and uh, that's what we should. Maybe you should even. I mean, Matthias, for example, only comes in the afternoon, so maybe, which is yeah. approaching, mm -hmm. skipping too much. Not too much, baby, too little. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Maybe I need to uh, charge my computer somewhere. Yeah, yeah okay. But also, okay, we need to, to, to make this on. Yes, we should get uh, let's, let's try this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, fine.